I want to talk today about process theology and the politics of empathy. One of my mentors, Howard Thurman, tells the story of being hired as a young man to rake leaves for a local businessman. As he was raking leaves, the daughter of the businessman spied him, watching him along the pathway. And she decided the leaves were beautiful and she wanted to pluck out leaf after leaf. And then finally, she decided to do what I enjoyed doing as a child, which was to jump into the leaves, to mess up all the piles. After telling her a few times, don't mess up the leaves, you're causing me extra work. Howard Thurman finally said, if you don't quit, I'm going to tell your father. The girl got very angry and then pulled out a hat pin from her purse and stuck it in Howard's arm. And when he squealed in pain, she was shocked and responded, Howard, you can't feel. She had been raised to believe that African Americans didn't feel the same way that white people felt. She'd been led to believe that African Americans were less than humans and did not have the feelings that whites had. Process theology proclaims a politics of empathy, a politics of empathy in which we acknowledge our feelings and the feelings of others. Process theology in the political world proclaims a world of Ubuntu, that Southern America phrase that says, I am because of you. It proclaims that we're all connected, that we're all similar, that there is no person who's ultimately other than myself, that we all have feelings and that the well being of one impacts the well being of all. Healthy and just political decision making takes into consideration the feelings of others, the impact we have on others, and empathizes with the joy and pain that others feel. Healthy and just political decision making, according to process theology, sees human wholeness as essential to the choices we make to economics, to justice issues, to health issues, and always acts in terms of the impact our decisions will have on people and on the environment and on communities. Today, in this time of incivility, this time in which many people see their opponents as not having feelings or children on the borders as not having feelings or people of color as not having feelings or even white supremacists as not having feelings, we need a politics of compassion and empathy. Even though we may have to use power to restrain injustice and to promote justice, even though we may have to at times cause pain or limit freedom, we need to make decisions with conscience, recognizing the impact of our decisions, the pain we cause, and acting to minimize that pain, even when we must protect the vulnerable, protect our borders, and restrain unlawful behavior. A politics of empathy takes seriously law, but just import as importantly, it takes seriously justice and empathy and tries to minimize the pain inflicted in the world, even for good causes. We can feel is at the heart of a politics of empathy. And others can feel. People who are different from us can feel. Our enemies have feelings. Immigrants have feelings. Red and blue have feelings. In recognizing the feelings of others, a politics of empathy seeks to nurture wholeness at every level reduce suffering, and promote well-being, even when we must make 
difficult decisions. Yes, you can feel. Yes, others can feel. And a process of empathy seeks to enhance beauty and justice in the body politic. 